This episode has been sponsored by Ryan's Farmer's Market. You're watching Scene TV, and I'm Maya McNulty, your host. Schenectady Cable Entertainment News and Events. And next on our show, I'd like to welcome Paula Marshman. Hi, welcome, Paula. Thank you, Maya. So tell us about the Women's Fund of the Capital Region. You have an awards luncheon coming yes, up. Yes, we do. We're very, we're very anxious and very proud of this because this is our primary fundraiser during the year for the Women's Fund of the Capital Region. And uh, we, we uh, provide scholarships and mentoring programs for non-traditional women students at Hudson Valley Community College and Schenectady County Community College. So is this, this is your sixth Trailblazer Award Luncheon. Tell us, um, have you been in this organization since it started? Yes, uh, pretty much since 2007 I've been involved, but there's been a number of women who have been involved since its, its inception. And uh, at our Trailblazer Luncheon we provide an opportunity to honor those women who have been leaders in the community to provide the funding that we need. It's really for their philanthropic yeah. efforts. So, Paul, tell us about the mission of the Women's Fund of the Capital Region. It's to promote the independence, growth, and, and self-determination of women in, in the capital area by education and training. Originally, we gave grants out to uh, mm -hmm. different women's shelters that provided training and those kind of support services that women need. Mm -hmm. And then we refined our focus about three years ago to provide scholarships, and then finally a mentoring program for the non-traditional women students. And we've raised almost a hundred, well we've given almost a hundred thousand dollars since we've started the scholarship program to Hudson Valley and Schenectady How County. How do you County raise County. the money? We raise, the, the Trailblazer Luncheon is our primary mm -hmm. vehicle for raising money. We have a number of sponsors, our honorary committee that we're mm -hmm. very happy to have Jane Golub as our honorary oh, nice. chairperson this year. And uh, just by the generous donations of so many uh, people in the community who think that this is a great organization. And you partnered with to. the United Way as well? Yes, this is a collaborative effort. The Women's Fund is a collaborative effort of the United Way of the Capital Region and the Community Foundation of mm -hmm. the Greater Capital Region. And, uh, and while we're our separate organization, they do provide some so services to us throughout the year. When is the luncheon? The luncheon is November 20th, uh -huh. starting at 11 o'clock, and it runs until about 2 o'clock. This year we're starting something new. We're having a women's marketplace where we're providing an opportunity to have some shopping before lunch. So from 11 to 12, there'll be an opportunity to shop. Uh -huh. And then afterwards, from 1.30 to 2.30, there will also be an additional opportunity to shop. Uh -huh. But uh, we're going to have a wonderful lunch at Glenn Sanders, uh -huh. and then... Uh, provide an opportunity for you to meet some of the scholarship recipients from both SCC mm -hmm. and Hudson Valley. Yeah, tell us about these honor honoring these local women in the community um, and what, what impact they've made in the community to make them be aware of being honored. For work. the trailblazers, mm -hmm. it's really for their... What their, were their criteria? Well, it's really for their, uh, really their great philanthropic Philanthropic effort mm -hmm. and uh, and their involvement in different community organizations. This year, we're awarding Beth Coco, who founded Micro Knowledge, mm -hmm. and Christine Standish of the Standish Fo Family Foundation. So, um, Paula, if we wanted to get tickets for the event, how would we find out? Okay, go directly to the Women's Fund website. It's Women's Fund CR. So just spell out Women's Fund CR dot org and register right online. Great, thank you. We'll make sure that we get that on our screen as well. So, what is the cost of attending this luncheon? The cost is $75, and, mm -hmm. an, and it's a great effort. Again, it's you're, you're helping to fund the scholarship program of the Women's Fund of the Capital Region. So, when was the Women's Fund of the Capital Region established, and what was the purpose again of that? It was established in 2006 mm -hmm. by a, a group of leaders from the United Way as well as the Community Foundation mm -hmm. of the Greater Capital Region, bringing in other interested women who felt that there was a need to help give back to other women in, in, in our greater community. We really serve uh, and target those counties of Schenectady, Albany, Rensselaer, mm -hmm. Saratoga, and Schoharie counties. So do you have like little chapters where groups meet? How, how do you no. get involved with a meeting if you wanted to help? 
if you want to help, you know, uh, contact one of us through the website and we'll be happy to get back to you. Mm -hmm. We have a variety of ways you can be involved through our events committee, our program committee, as well as our marketing and communication committee. So the scholarship fund um, is to help women going to SCC and HVCC. Right. And is there a specific course that you're helping them to study, that they're studying, or is it open? Um, it's open to any non-traditional woman student. We're really targeting the age of 25 and above because we realize that those are usually the women who might not access other ways of gaining scholarship mm -hmm. or assistance to go to college. Plus they're balancing, as you can imagine, just a, a variety of things. They're, they're working mm -hmm. as well as raising a family in many instances. Paula, who are some of the sponsors of the luncheon this year? Uh, General Electric and uh, Key Bank are our primary sponsors. We also have Frank Adams Jewelers as well as Yonos and there's a number of other sponsors that will be listed on our program bro brochure as well as our website. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and again, it's going to be held on November 20th at November, the Glenn Sanders Mansion. Yes. And the start time again was? It's 11 o'clock to go to the, the Women's Marketplace. Tell us about the Women's Marketplace. What kind of vendors are you looking to have? Well, we're having vendors. This, we're very excited about this. It's vendors, women vendors, who sell different types of products, crafts, mm -hmm. jewelry, uh, food items. It's terrific because the holidays are yeah, right, right around the corner. It's a great opportunity yeah, it's a to holiday start. shopping it. Exactly. So, and tell us about the crowd. Um, Last year you had over 250. Are you looking for a record number this year? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I hope we're reaching at least 300. I would love to have that number because, again, it's just, it's just an awesome event to have. And if someone wanted to make a donation, where would they do that? Again, go directly online, womensfundcr.org. Super. Uh, Paul, I want to thank you so much for being on Scene TV. We learned a lot today about the Capital Region. Paul, I want to thank you so much for being on Scene TV. We learned so much about the Women's Fund of the Capital Region, and best of luck to you for your sixth annual Trailblazer Luncheon. Oh, thank you, Maya. We really appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome. My pleasure. You're watching Scene TV, and I'm Maya McNulty, your host. Schenectady Cable Entertainment News and Events. And on today's show, I'd like to welcome Ronnie McCletsky. She is the importer of artisan jewelry from Ireland. Welcome to the show, Ronnie. It's Thank such a pleasure you, to have you here. <laughs> Ronnie, tell us about RM Irish Jewels. Well, I started RM Irish Jewels because I felt that there's a lot of jewelry here that everybody has. Uh, you know, when you buy a piece of jewelry, you say, oh, did you get that from so-and-so or whatever. And when I was over in Ireland, I noticed the artisan jewelry, and it was so different and so unique and had so much meaning to it that I needed to bring it back to my friends. Yeah, so you grew up in New York City? I grew up in New York City, went to Ireland in 1970 as a kid at the age of 14. It changed my life. I just could not believe how different it was from New York City. So tell us about your journey and how Irish... RM Irish Jewels began? It began when my mom and I in 2001, we were over in Ireland and we kept going to the store in Dublin and we kept buying the jewelry there and buying it and saying, I can't wait to bring it back to our friends because we'd never seen anything like it. Till finally after the third day, I spoke to the owner and just said, where would you get this jewelry? Because I've never seen anything like it. And she told me that it was all artisan jewelry, that it wasn't mass produced, and it was from all over Ireland. Mm -hmm. So we came back, and in 2001, everybody knows what happened in September. So my dream went on hold for quite a few years. And then one day, somebody said, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? And I said, hands down, import the artisan jewelry. So I researched it, found all the different artisans, and that January, I flew to Ireland, and I met all of my artists, couldn't go home, and met, found more of them. And then started bringing it back to America, and everybody went nuts over it. That's wonderful. Tell us about the piece that you have on. Well, the piece that I have on is brand new. Is from an artist from the west of Ireland. 
And it's all Swarovski crystals, and there's also the bracelet that goes with it. And it's really genuine and unique. She designed it because she felt that it was the holidays coming up and that people should be excited, like for New Year's with the ball and everything else. Oh, yeah. So that's why she made that. Yeah, I love the bling on it. And I love the piece that you have me adorn in as well. Yes, it's the same artist. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I love the bling in it. So um, what has your experience been like with starting RM, RM Irish Jewels? Well, I began it as a side career. And then, because I was in corporate sales, and whenever I needed money to go away, I would have a party. And since my jewelry isn't like donuts, you know, it doesn't uh -huh. melt, I would be able to, you know, bring it out and sell it. And then I'd end up having some spending money. And then a year ago, when I lost my job and that ended, I just said, I'm done. For 35 years, I've been in corporate sales, on the road, company car, everything. And I just said, I'm going to 100% do my RM Irish jewels. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I only did sterling silver. And I found that women didn't want to pay for sterling silver anymore and they didn't want to polish it. So I flew back to Ireland in January and I found four award-winning artists that did alternate metals. It's really costume jewelry that nobody wants to talk about, but that's what it is. And it's really been a success because now mm -hmm. it's affordable and it's unique. And now that's taken me to a whole nother journey. So tell us about the import because I'm thinking that how perhaps it could be expensive to do that. So tell us about the price point in your jewelry. Well, it is expensive, and the reason being is that I'm up against the euro. So if I buy something, let's just say, hypothetically, I don't have anything in this price range, mm -hmm. but if I bought something at 10, 10 euros, that means that it's costing me $13.60. Now, somebody in Ireland, if they were to purchase an American good, that same 10 euros would only cost them $7.60 because of the power of the conversion. Mm -hmm. So I'm up against that. I also have to pay duty on these items that come into the United States and also the postage. So mm -hmm. if you get like maybe, even though it's 20 items, it could be 25 euros or somewhere in the area of like 30 something dollars just to ship it. So Ronnie, tell us, how do you know if an artisan is right for your collection? I can tell by the quality of it and also the design because there are a lot of artisans that are out there that the quality isn't there. You, know, you can have all different levels of sterling silver or even the alternate metals, but I can tell by when I speak to the people and their passion for it and the way that even the way they're dressed as an artist mm -hmm. and just the quality of the jewelry and the story also that goes behind the jewelry. Ronnie, each of your artisans have a story for each piece that they create. Tell us about a, a piece that you have here today. Okay, well, this is one of the pieces here, and this is called Rock Pool. And the reason that it's called Rock Pool is because of the li little things along here. These are the rocks. These are really the bumps along the road of your life. And also, these lines here are the road of the different paths that your life has taken. And the foam over them is the spray that you would find, say, in a rock pool or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's so much meaning to this. It's also, it's got a really good weight to it. And the artisan, this hole in the center, she actually makes the earrings out of them. Oh, that's very cool. It is very cool. That's a great story. Now, do all of your artisans have a story for their pieces? For the most part, they do. Uh, some of them they just create, but a lot of them do have the circle of life on them and different uh, pieces that they have. But there is a lot of stories to them, uh -huh. you know, why they created it, what type of mood they were in at the time, and how it affected their lives. Yeah, and some of them even have the Irish blessing I've seen. Yes, some of them have the Irish blessing on there as well. So none of these pieces by these artisans are mass produced? No, they're not mass produced. That's what makes it unique. So it's good and it's bad, and I'll tell you why. Because last year I had a great piece, the double heart. You probably remember it. And I ordered two of them. And then a couple months later I ordered another two. And when I went back to order them, they said, oh, no, we don't want to make that anymore. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I want more of those. I have friends like, in America that yeah. want them. <laughs> and so finally, then I couldn't get it for probably about four or five months. And I convinced the artist, could you please make me up a few more? And so she did. So I have them back in my collection. That's great. So you, you think that the craftsmanship, actually, you know that the craftsmanship of your, your merchandise is the highest quality. It's the best sterling that they get to find.
And um, how about the fashion trends? Are they more contemporary? Or are they just more sophisticated? Or are they just more traditional? What do you find in the pieces? I think they're a little Trendy. bit of each. You know, I mean, now I know that, you know, big earrings are in these big, long stick earrings. Well, everybody in the world's going to have them. Um, the Irish might take it to a different level. They might make it multiples or whatever. But they're very much into fashion. I have the uh, one artisan that is very much into fashion, like the uh, Saworski crystal necklace yeah. you have on, which represents the circle of life, all the twists and turns in your life. And then I have another artisan that is very traditional. Um, I just saw him when I was in Dublin, and he's very traditional, and he doesn't like to make certain pieces either. So, you know, again, they're yeah, artisans. They're <laughs> so, you know, I have to think along the lines of that. But, yes, they're very much, they do a little bit of both. Do you enjoy the stories that they tell? I love the stories they tell. I love meeting them. The newest artist that I have, I just went to Belfast, and the Titanic Museum is very, very big up there. And so when I went to this artisan's house, it's a female, her young son came out and played the tin whistle for me. And I put it on video and on Facebook. So <laughs> you don't get to do that if you're going to a buyer's convention or to a trade show. Right. Now, each piece with the artisan, do, does it come with a little story or a card that tells you about each piece? When they purchase sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, they might have it on their, you know, like on the pages that they gave me, so I uh -huh. have the story. Other of it is more traditional, like the circle of life. Everybody knows the circle of life, the twists and turns in your life. Sure. But it's also the experience as far as how anybody can interpret it. You know, there's some other things that are enthusiasm and all different things, encouragement. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different symbolism in this jewelry. Yeah, speaking of symbolism, you once told me a love story about a sailor or a mermaid. Tell me about that story again. Oh, gosh, again. yes, it's a great story. Um, there is a mermaid ring, if I can lean over here and get yeah. it. This is a ring that basically looks like a mermaid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like a swimmer and everything. And out of the blue, this gentleman called me up, left me a message, and said, I'm trying to order this ring on your website, and I can't do it. So I emailed him, and he phoned me. He was over past Saudi Arabia, and he wanted to use this ring as an engagement ring. It seemed that he was out in the middle of the sea on his private boat, and his engine died, and the sea swelled, and he fell overboard, and he thought he was going to die, and out of nowhere came this woman and her boat and her friends, and she threw him a life preserver and rescued him, and he used this as the engagement ring, and I asked him, I said, how did you find me? And he said he kept Googling mermaid rings and Googling them, and he said, finally, when I read your story about you and your mom, he said, I knew this was the person I had to buy this ring from. Oh, that's a sweet story. So did they get married? They got married and they reenacted the entire, um, the whole scene. She didn't want to do it. He <laughs> went and bought a wetsuit and he tethered this ring onto a lanyard. And when she threw him the life preserver, he said to her, can you grab that box that's there? Go pick that up. And he said, wait until I get on board. It looks like it's something important. And so he got on board while he was at one end of the boat taking off his wetsuit. Unbeknownst to him, she had opened up the box and saw the ring. And she said to him, this must be a sign that we should get married. <laughs> and when she turned around, he had on a white T-shirt that said, will you marry me? Oh, that's so precious. So my jewelry is now all the way over there in Saudi Arabia. So do you think that your jewelry brings uh, romance? I think my jewelry brings a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. I think it brings romance. I think it brings happiness. Look how you smile when you wear that piece. <laughs> and I think it brings people encouragement, and I think it brings them luck. It makes them feel special because people come up to you and say, Maya, where did you get that necklace? I've never mm -hmm. seen anything like it. You know, I mean, or you can't get it again, or it makes it really unique. And women feel sexy. They tell me that it, people stop them on the street. It starts conversation for them, and it makes them stand out. Yeah, and don't I we all want to stand out? I definitely have worn this piece, and I have been stopped uh, uh, people have asked me where I've gotten it from, and you have two websites now. So one is Jewelry from Abroad, and the others are RM Irish Jewels. Well, it's Jewels from Abroad, or, okay, but, Jewels. but it'll bring you to RM Irish Jewels. And the reason why I did that 
is because a lot of people don't remember rmirishjewels.com. So I figured you'll remember jewels from abroad, meaning abroad over in Ireland, or you remember them from me being abroad. (laughs) (laughs) However it goes, you'll remember my website that way. Uh So that's why I did that. So Ron, we have an upcoming event on December 7th at Feldhausen Florist. Tell us about some of the pieces that you'll be on showcase there. Well, I'll be bringing, you know, my new collection, the one that I did go over to Ireland and get from my Belfast artist, and then there was another one from the South. Um, I will be featuring my new Titanic collection because Belfast has the Titanic Museum because that's where Uh Belfast, the Titanic, was made. So the artist has all that. And then there's so many new pieces that I will be bringing and I know it's going to be a fabulous event. Yeah, it's going to be held at Feltals and Flores on December 7th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And Ronnie will be on display with her Iron Irish Jewels. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us on Scene TV today about Iron Irish, Irish Jewels? I'd like to say how lucky I am that Maya McNulty is my very, very good friend and brought me to Scene TV. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for um, being here. Oh, thank you, Maya. You're welcome. This episode has been sponsored by Ryan's Farmer's Market.